All right, guys, I'm really excited. My coil lovers I've been waiting for have finally showed up from Feel Suspension. I was sponsored by Feel years and years ago, and I actually still had the suspension I was originally sponsored. Um, and Mike reached out to me and said, you know what? Why don't you uh, send that in and we'll help you out again. We'll upgrade the Feels to the Remote Reservoir three-way adjustable. So I'm really excited to finally open these up. I've never had, uh, I've never had Remote Reservoir shocks. Um, and so I'm pretty excited about that. Very excited actually. So a total refresh, I got some extra parts. We'll go through this in a minute. But uh, just seeing this little tube going to the, going to the, uh, to the rear shock, I'm pretty excited about that. Hey Pinto. Yeah? Can you help me out, sir? Yes, I can. I only have one hand because I'm filming. I want to see it. You know how to open it? Well, you have something? Are you a specialist in opening parts? Nope. Right here? Yes. I was talking with Pinto about uh, spring rates. He said his car in Portugal is 8K front? 6K nope. front. 6K front. There's no way for S chassis. S14. S14 was 6K front. I told him I run 12K and he thinks it's crazy. He had a car with 11 and he's like, I had to sell the car because the springs were too stiff. The green, blue car? Yeah. What, what is the suspension rates? 12. I'm gonna drive the car, so. Yeah, you'll I'm like it. See, well, I'm gonna see if I Do like you run a, a sway bar in the front? Uh, in the S14, no, because the angle kit don't, don't have space for it. 6K with no sway bar? Yes. You're crazy. You, you, drive, You're crazy. you drive that car, so. I don't remember. I was having too much fun. <laughs> It, dri it drives good, but now that you tell me, I would I would probably pay attention different when I when I drive it this time. Oh, they really did use my old. Uh, that's crazy, and just modified it to to run the uh, the remote reservoir. That's actually really cool. Yeah, it has all the rub marks from uh, when I had it before. They put their new feel sticker on it. Podium spec. Look at that. Podium spec. That's putting a lot of pressure on me. Good work. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it looks nice. Oh yeah. I I, don't, I never see it like before because we don't use it in Portugal. That is nice. What's the rate on the rear? Spin it. Five k. It's good. Yeah, my my in the back maybe it's five, not four, but in front I have I have certain that is six. I don't know if we have space to put that reservoir. We'll have to find space. Yeah, it looks very nice. Couple of zip ties. Cool. What does this do? Click, click, click. I have no idea how to adjust these. Is there a click up here? Click, click, click. Oh yeah, we'll figure it out. Is it, where's the instructions on how to adjust uh, multi-way shocks? Oh, more stickers. Nice. Anyways, I'm pretty excited about this. What is this? Oh, those are my extra, they're extra, the lower brackets for the front. You wanna open? No, nah, no, nah, it's fine. It's just spare parts. Let's uh, open one front one. The front's, now he, I know he put uh, tender springs in it. So it should help out a little bit for more droop, more travel. I think they're long travel fronts. I'm not sure exactly what they did. I probably should know about this. Shameless plug, but there's my ice co cooler. Also, notice how well packaged it is. Very nice. Shout out to Feel. We order quite a bit of stuff from them, and it always comes uh, well packaged, and they ship stuff really quick too. <coughs> Custom spec, 12K. See. Does it say podium spec? Oh, look at that, podium spec. You don't get podium unless you have 12K front springs. Well, I have podium in my car, so I don't cool. know. <laughs> Needs stiffer springs. So we have a wise fab front for this. So this will work out to, to put the wise fab top hats. Um, yeah, that's cool. I'm really excited about this. So shout out to Feel, the best. All right, guys, we are back again with another the, something of working on 
my pro car. Um, it's been a while. I don't know where I left off before. I have no idea if this is going to be the start of a video or if I'm going to patch this into the middle of a video because I don't. it's been a long time since we worked on this thing. Well, not that long, but a long time since I filmed it. Recently, what we've been doing, the water system is complete and doesn't leak. The fuel system is complete, pressurizes, doesn't leak. The oil system is complete, pressurizes, I think, and doesn't leak. We have not started the car yet. What I've been doing is modifying the wiring harness, um, which I did, and I did it all backwards and upside down, and I went to go test it, and nothing was working, and I was like, oh, I must have been really tired because the connector, you can see the connector uh, when you pin it, number one would be in the top corner, but I had it upside down because I wasn't paying attention. Even though, even though I've done this a hundred times, still made a mistake. So I took it home, repinned it, uh, did a pin test from every every single pin on the wire uh, connector to the ECU and verified everything, wrote it all down. I got myself a fancy little chart. What goes where? And uh, now, the moment of truth. Um, Kelly helped me plug the engine wiring harness up to the engine itself. Um, every, what are you doing? Just making sure I look good. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta stand out, right? There's a throwback or right stand there. Out. Um, we are ready to start it. Yeah. Ready to crank it and see what happens. Yeah. Um, I found a base map online. Um, I set set the inputs and outputs. This this car has a lot of sensors. It has a speed sensor for the differential. It has a. Uh, a lot of sensors. I'm not going to go with nitrous, each, it's each got all these Oh yeah, it's, it's got nitrous. It's Ugh. got. When Chase Bay's originally built this harness, they went all the way overboard with everything. Stuff that I'll probably never use, but it's on there. Exhaust back pressure sensor. <laughs> you go, go plug it in, man. And this motor is completely different. There's no like knock sensors. There's no oil pressure sensors. There's no nothing. Man, what am I doing here? This there's one like says NOS. Like ten connectors that don't go anywhere. H two O. There's an H two O sensor in here. There's actually two. There's a engine coolant temperature sensor, and then I had an extra one that was the outlet of the radiator, so we could oh. measure the difference between the engine and what was going on in the back. Cool, cool. Well, uh, here's the beast as it sits. You want to try and crank it? Yeah. See what happens with this. Go on. You want to check the leaks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the. Oh well, it's not leaking there. The Is it leaking up here? No. no it's... Leaks. Seems pretty good. You ready? I'm not seeing any anything on the ground. No. Okay. You got TPS feedback, so. Give it the beans. <laughs> oh man. It's trying, it wants to go. All them pops and bangs got your garrette spinning. Oh, the, turbo's spinning? the turbo's spinning. Every time it go, boop, 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 boop. turbo it's spinning a little bit more. Look at him doing the uh, what the world knows as wizardry with the computer. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's, I'm just gonna add fuel to it and see if it starts. Okay. It seems like it's a little, a little unhappy. <laughs> it smells rich to me. What do you think, Jake? I don't know. I'm just here for the show. You're just here for the show. What are you talking about? Come on. Oh, too much. Seems a little smoky. It smells like it. Smells like what? It smells like too much fuel. Ah. Jake's a magician, so... I think it's from 2015, too, so... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's got, it's got uh, 2015 and 2022 fuel. Mm, yeah. What is that, 55 that's good. That's, that's, octane? That's a good split year. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah 2018 was an okay year. Okay. 2019 was good, 2020. Crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crap. <laughs> oh, man, look. It's even got a nice blue belt. Somewhat blue. Oh. Those are supposed to be better, aren't they? Performance, racing, gates belt. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just. Alright, let's get start. You ready? Now I am. What do you think, Jake? Well, we're getting all the all the 
things, you just gotta give them in the right order. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Once that TPS, it's my favorite part when people are like putting a base map on a car, the blah, 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 blah. Where are we? I don't know. Just a question for the people. What? Uh, you put some gnarly big cams in this thing, huh? Yeah. And some gnarly pistons in here. Yeah. Do you know uh, what compression pistons these are? They're 11 to 1. 11 to 1. I'm not 100% sure that the valves won't touch the pistons. Well, they haven't yet. All right. I mean, as we we'll know. know at 8,000 RPM, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When it... So it's fueling and then defueling. The fueling and the defueling. Okay. I can't, the, the voltage is so low, the laptop keeps connecting and disconnecting, so I can't even see the data while I'm cranking it. Uh, I'm getting should really we, frustrated. Should we pause well, and add We should do a... 150 things besides just sitting here cranking it because mm. the car's not ready to be cranked, but yeah. we know it's going to fire. Okay. The injectors are working, the coils are working, the triggers are working, the TPS is working. Everything we need to do to make the engine run is working. We just need a brain to run the software. <laughs> a brain to brain. Because that's, that's a brain, right? No, it's a laptop. And some battery voltage. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Next. Pretty stoked. Right. The motor spins, right? So that's a good thing. I don't know if we have oil pressure yet. But it's not leaking on the ground, right? Uh, let me look. Uh, no. So far, so good. Turbo feels so good. It does? It's just like... I've had that turbo for like six years or eight years. I don't know if they oh, sell no. it anymore. What is it? It never took off. It's a GTW 3884. Oh. So it was between the 3582 and like the 40 series. And it was yeah. a GTW, which had a larger shaft than the GTX series. But like it's similar, it's supposed to be stronger. I don't know. What do you, uh, cool. what do you they, they said it maxes out at like nine, 900 to 1,000. So like 500 at 10 PSI. Yeah. So I can't really under underrun this. Horsepower well, this, this is, is gonna have to be an 800 horsepower car. This is an extremely high compression engine. Yeah, but imagine putting a 3576 on this. It would light like that. Yeah, it Plus would blow the turbo blues. off the manifold. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, uh, check this out. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you can't do this on video, man. They can hear me. <laughs> That's just too good. Oh, I think man. this is a job to pick up tomorrow. Okay. That's so close. Also, I forgot to pin the VVTI in there. So uh, whoa. Watch out. In there. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get this through the cannon plug on the firewall. We're not. We just have to go around. Take the long way home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, pretty good. Pretty good. Right. For, you know, it's, 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 I finally got the wiring right. Yeah. I think. I mean, that's why it's not starting. <laughs> we're hitting, what, at least three or four cylinders. That's what I was thinking. Like, yeah, a couple. Better than one. I guess I should do a scope on the camera and crank because it almost sounded like it was hitting three and then not, and then three and then not. Mm, so maybe yeah. there's something wrong with the scope. Mm. Built in scope function, what is that? It's you master. Uh, EMU black. EMU black, oh, okay. So we're back. We're back. And we figured some things out. Uh, Kelly tuned the car before, and that's why it's not working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who left the firing order? One, three, one, three, one, three. <laughs> So I pulled a base map to get it going and it was definitely a VBTI base map without coil on plug. So we're messing around. We finally got, I got the fueling close enough where it was like, ba 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 And so we, <laughs> we stabilized it enough to where I'm like, hey, that's not running on all four cylinders. And Kelly, before that, he's like, hey, you should check the firing order. I'm like, ah, shut up. I, my mind was on something else. And then, and then I was like, hey, we should check the firing order. And he's like, I just said that. <laughs> this, is the, this is the back and forth that happens. Nobody ever sees this in a shop. I love it. Somebody will say something very basic that you need to check, like that, that very minimum, you know, knowledge. Like firing you guys, order. Like firing order. Or that your step's plugged in, or that your grounds are good. Oh, the other issue is the, the laptop kept disconnecting while we're cranking, which usually means the voltage is low. So we put a second battery on, it was still doing it. And Kelly's like, oh, I forgot to hook up the ground. I'm like, oh, no, I hooked it up. And then we go look, and I bolted it to a powder-coated manifold, which I thought would be all right, but it was like 9.6 volts while the battery's at 12 volts. And I'm like, we might have a problem. So Kelly grabs the power probe. Shout out to Power Probe. Power Probe. Hashtag, Power Probe. Hashtag Power Probe. And then Kelly jams the Power Probe in there and, and grounds it out. And then we got 12 volts. So we got a ground problem, which I'm not done installing the harness. That's not a huge issue. I just need to redo it. Anyways, we're in a testing phase. We just barely went into the software and uh, put the firing order in. And so now this is our first time, full disclosure, this is the first time testing it. I think it's going to start right up. Yes. All right. All right. Video footage for the first reel. I guess it did start, but it didn't. It didn't run. Oh yeah. Ready? Yeah.
years in the making. What? Did it just pop into gear? I don't know. Something fell. Did something fall off the car? Is there oil leaking? Did uh, the drive shaft fall out? Drive uh, shaft fell out. Yeah, the drive shaft fell out. Sorry, everybody. That's a terrible camera angle. I was there's, trying. No, there's no oil in this trans either. Oh, that's good for it. That's a what? $10,000 transmission. In today's market? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, mm. let me just take a moment. Are you shaking? This is a hold big on, deal. let me hold your hand. No, nah, nah, I'm getting excited shaking. anymore, I wish. How old are you? You've had two kids, you can't be that excited. If I got the shakes at this age, it's because I'm old, it's not because I'm excited. <laughs> so do you drink a Red Bull at lunch? You know old people are handwriting? Uh, yeah, yeah that's, uh, what is that called? They get the spoons? The shakes, I don't know. No, no, don't it's, know. there's a thing for it. It's, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get called out, I'm gonna get canceled for that one. This is a big deal. Yeah. 2016 was the last time this car, no, it didn't run. 2015, we were in SEMA 2015, we had to push it in because the engine had blown up. So this car hasn't run since Irwindale 2015. Dang, dude. You should kill those fuel pumps so my battery for my daily doesn't die. <laughs> Can I enjoy the moment? Yeah, but without all the noise. 2015. 2020 is five years. 22. Seven years. Dang. That, that was a lot of thinking. And this engine has been built and in this car for like at least three of those years. Yeah, two years. I remember putting this engine in, but yeah, it's been a while. This is pretty cool, dude. All these parts were sponsored parts that I was supposed to run in 2016. Really? Yeah. What cams? The pistons I what? got from CP, BC cams, 272, oh. 264, 272 staggered cams. I'm pretty excited about that. It sounds beefy. It doesn't sound like oh, it's, it's running very running good. On, it's not running on six cylinders. Still. Uh, this is that Garrett Turbo and uh, all the goodies. I'm really, really excited. I want to figure out, we're going to get it stabilized to idle and then figure out which cylinder's not hitting and then go through and actually get it to idle good. That's the next step. Hook up the cool. vacuum lines, we'll reroute the thing, turn on the water pump. We can, we can actually idle this thing for more than five seconds. All right. Good job. Thanks, Kelly. No top end. Was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, I was like two, oh my eyes. That was like 2,000 RPM. Well, what is your? Uh... I don't know. The laptop went dead. There we go. All right, that's all good. Look at the jump in timing. So, why don't you tell us what was going on? I started in the middle of what we were doing. Oh, I don't know. What was going on? I can't think. There's so much fuel in the air. Oh, uh, well, we started it and it didn't run at all. Uh, six? Or six? Huh? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, so, we had a customer coming in and dealt with that, and now we're, we're back. And, uh, we just pulled the coil packs and swapped them back and forth to kind of like, deduce, double deuce, figure out which, uh, which cylinder wasn't firing. It was number four, so we swapped coils, and Brandon hands me his thick <laughs> coil. Hey man, it's got the same connector. It's like three inches taller. <laughs> Dude, it's fat. Show it. Yeah, yeah, look at this thing. What do we got? We got super clean, super clean, super clean, among us. <laughs> oh my hey man, god. Man, it was free. Hey man, it was, I yeah. got spares. Yeah, you, you got spares. I wonder, right. if, I wonder how long that's been bad for if it was bad on my old motor. That's probably why it blew up. Yeah, What'd maybe. you call it? SEMA? Was that the SEMA, Irwindale? It, it blew up at Irwindale and then we took it to SEMA, but we had to push it into the uh, 
you know, of that coil. The whole, yeah, that's yeah, a, you're timing that. Laying the coil. Yeah, 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 I'm not gonna show that. Yeah. Hey, it runs. Yeah, We're yeah. getting close. Dude, that's sick. This car is so sick. So sick. I love it. All right, guys, this is kind of a big deal. Once again, I've missed a whole bunch of steps on the process of this car. Um, honestly, none of it was very exciting, but today is exciting, and I'll tell you why. This car has not moved under its own power since 2015, and right now, tonight, it's gonna move under its own power. Um, what we've done, we finished the exhaust. Um, it's kind of scabbed together from other parts, so I don't really wanna show that off. Uh, the suspension's all bolted up. The driver's seat's back in place. The wide band is installed, which is one of the big things I wanted to get done so that I had some idea of where we were so I don't blow it up. Um, and it is ready to move. It is ready to move. And uh, as you'd imagine, with all the clutter we have in the parking lot, uh, a bunch of stuff ended up in the way, so we had to literally clear a spot just to get this car out. So it uh, happens to be raining right now for the first time in the summer in Utah. But uh, I'm gonna go... Uh, I'm gonna go test it out. I'm gonna go drive it and see see what it does. I'm pretty excited about this. Ready? Yep. The fans are not wired up yet from the ECU. So uh, I gotta jump the fan on for now. Um, there's a lot of things like that that don't work exactly right. I'll probably end up wiring the fuel pump so it comes on with the ECU. Right now it's on a switch. Uh, when we built this car, it was kind of before I was into all the inputs and outputs on the ECU, but now that I have all the capabilities and know how to do it with the ECU Master, I'm gonna do all that stuff. I'm also gonna put the ADU7 ECU Master dash in here and uh, make that work. It's on the ground. been a while. I had BC on for a while I, uh, when I started with this car. I had fuel suspension on it and now we're back to fuel suspension. Um, it's got the two-way two, two -way or three-way, I don't even know, but remote reservoir adjustable shocks in the rear. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we got to move some of this junk off the top and it's time to go test it out.
this video. I had a blast driving this car. I'm excited to work on it some more. It definitely needs a lot more stuff done to it. But uh, just being able to sit in the driver's seat and drive him down the road and uh, an attempt to blow it up was like a huge thing for me. So um, I look forward to doing more on this stuff. But for now, we're moving on to working on the Chaser. Uh, I'm gonna be back and forth between these two cars over the next couple weeks to get everything ready. I've got a need for this car. I got a need for that car at different points this month. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. We'll definitely have more coming on this and more coming on the Chaser. So follow along. Uh, I'm also going to be going to Clutch Kickers in the meantime, so I'll have a Clutch, ki Clutch Kickers video on top of all that. See you next time. Bye.